Hi there, it's The Way Show, and uh, it's nice to be with you again today. Um, on this bitterly cold day uh, where we are uh, in London, um, England, uh, it's been bitterly cold today, snow everywhere, uh, but that's not taking a shine off the show today. Uh, my name is Wally, and uh, special thanks to my uh, colleague and friend, um, Yomi, who is behind the scenes, uh, making sure I am coming to you live, Claire, today. So it's a way show. Uh, if this is the first time you're watching, or you've been watching us before now, and you have not subscribed to our show, uh, what are you waiting for? Just subscribe to the show, okay? Tell somebody about the show. Um, always comes to you about this time, YouTube Live. And um, you know, tell someone to sell someone about this show, the way show. Today, I have got with me someone. Um, we, we're going to be discussing some very interesting topic. Okay, whatever you're doing at this particular time, I want you to pay the utmost attention because I'm very sure you're going to benefit quite a lot from today's discussion. I have got with me today uh, Professor Nandi Madiche. Uh, Professor Madiche is. Um, a professor of marketing and entrepreneurship at the UNICEF Business School in Oka, Nigeria, as well as a research fellow at the uh, University of, uh, of Economics, uh, Hu Chun Min City in Vietnam. Um, he is also an external examiner at the Liverpool Business School. So he is quite a vast fellow. He is um, quite experienced in what he we're going to be talking about today. And um, he is a man of many hats. and. Uh, um, we, we, we just would like to welcome Professor Madiche um, to our show today. Prof, thank you for taking your time, busy schedule. Um, I know you're a very busy man. Um, I also forgot to mention that you're also a research fellow at the Bloomsbury Institute here in England. Thank you for joining us today, Prof. Thank you, Wally. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So um, I, we're going to be talking about something very... Um, that should be useful to people watching today, especially our young ones, our youth, and uh, something that will be very useful to the uh, continent of Africa. At the 74th session of the United Nations General, Sec uh, so General uh, Assembly, uh, 2021 was declared as the International Year of Creative Economy for Sustainable Development. So we're talking about creative economy as it relates to uh, their old mother Africa. So, Prof, um, before, I know before we um, came on this show, we, we discussed and there was some very interesting uh, uh, conversation between yourself and myself uh, about creative economy in Africa. To start with, what is creative economy for those watching us that probably do not know what we're going to talk about today? Right, that's that's a very interesting question because the jury is still out on that uh, in terms of definitions. <laughs> Although it was started by the the DCMS, uh, the, the the UK's. Um, I'll just get my um, my facts um, right here. Um, the the definition of creative industry is basically it's is everything that is art based, so to speak, and it ranges from visual to performing arts and every and art in its various um, forms and dimensions. Uh, more recently, um, there has been a, an intersection between the arts and, of course, uh, technology, and you begin to see the, the the movement from the STEM subjects. STEM being science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, now becoming STEAM with an A added on, which is the arts. So in that respect, you begin to see elements of animation and games coming into the equation. And, of course, these are usually computer-mediated. So that is what the creative economy tends to capture. It goes beyond the confines of what we traditionally regard as the arts and crafts, which is uh, very rudimentary in, 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 in the sense of the word. So everything is pivoted now to digital. So that also includes dig digital photography. It, it includes uh, digital, um, anything digital, technically speaking, digital design, graphic design, digital publishing, you name it, uh, it's all in there. And that is what's uh, been really driving uh, the economy forward 
especially for economies that want to diversify from that mono m m mono reliance, um, such as um, many countries in Africa, uh, like Nigeria, being heavily dependent on oil, and many others being heavily dependent on on minerals and all that. So, in in order to to be able to diversify and 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 be the position to actually uh, leverage or harness or basically to absorb the shocks that tend to uh, bewilder mon mon mono mono uh, monogamous um, sort of economies, so to speak. And without COVID, okay, without COVID nineteen, and quite a lot of countries have uh, who obviously uh, into just one particular set of income, uh, tourism oil uh, what have you and they seem to be really at this very moment uh, passing through a phase where uh, the economy is really going to suffer but how does the creative economy affect economy of a particular nation or a continent so to say now we're talking about africa um i'll just give you one or two um examples of recent trends and i i talk in terms of because i'm uh, i'm somebody of mixed embeddedness uh you were earlier mentioning about the, the chills and everything it is freezing today so I'm, I'm i'm based in england but um i have my heart is in africa so i do a lot of work uh with africa and that's why i'm, I'm a professor at the um, unisic business school namdi azikyo university in Oka, nigeria right so one of the key um, stories I, I want to give you, I don't know if it's a horror story or something that's going to be uh, <laughs> what's celebrated, is that Universal Music Group has set up store in Africa. So for, for a multinational music group, like Universal Music Group, setting up shop in Africa, it goes to tell you that there's something, there's money to be made out there and there are opportunities to be leveraged upon. And going back a little bit, just stepping back a little bit, I think it was probably around about 1994, thereabouts, where the economy of many African countries were rebased. We, we mm. rebased GDP. Remember that tussle between Nigeria and South Africa being giant of Africa? Yeah. And what's, mm -hmm. what's kind of flipped things around a little bit was the creative industries. It was taking, they, they had to recalculate GDP change the, the the base here and of course incorporate and appreciate the contribution of the creative economy and let me not and it goes beyond nollywood because nigeria has a, a budding uh film industry or movie industry so even nigerian music is is making major waves and it goes beyond that even streaming services so umg goes into nigeria for instance and many other parts of africa they're, they're, they're spreading their wings around there and you find the likes of canal plus canal plus going to to acquire um what do you call it um uh, rock studios uh, uh, part of iroko tv I, I think that gives um some semblance of or gives you some idea of of what is out there to be harnessed in africa uh, uh Prior to, to uh, this uh, conversation I'm having with you just now, I did a bit of research and, and, and the issue, what really bothers me is, are Africans really ready to embrace creative economy? Why I said this is this, in 2019, 2019, only 1.1%, that's about $22 million, of the total African startup investment went into creative economy. Yet, we are ready, African countries wouldn't mind selling the entire entity to, let me use a country in particular, China. All right? Why are we not ready? Why are we not looking towards creative economy? If a, a giant, a musical giant company can come and invest. We see Facebook uh, investing in these young people, setting up hubs in Africa, in Nigeria, in Ghana, in South Africa. Yet our governments are just plain see don't look. What is the problem here? Are they not seeing where uh, the, 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 the next economy is going to be? Uh, we're looking at China. We, we, we've seen. 
example of Jack Ma, you know, or with his Alibaba. Uh, we've, we've seen the uh, United States of America, we've seen India, who is obviously becoming a giant, so to say, in creative industry. Bollywood is, <laughs> you, you, it's incomparable at the moment. Indian music is incomparable. And obviously, the digital arts as well, they are far ahead of us, miles ahead of us. So what is wrong with Africa? Do we need to turn the tap off, or the oil tap off, finally? before we now sit down and, you know, get up and say, all right, yeah, come on, let's do something else. Or if we don't do it, we're going to be left behind. So what, what do you think is wrong with Africa, Prof? I like the way you wrap things up. I think turning <laughs> off that tap, turning off that tap is the best way forward, to be quite honest. But something you tend to uh, forget about, especially Nigeria, is that uh, the economy is, is not public sector driven. It's, it's private sector driven. And that's that's that is the, the truth across most parts of Africa. Come think of it, from the from the look, look at the likes of DSTV, for instance, or is it MTN and the rest of them? Yeah, you see that it's, it's private investment, or is it Dangote? Yeah. So these are very interesting conversations to have. The creative is is a lack of appreciation, and lack of having somebody on the board in terms of policy making, for somebody that is not really in that industry. I think there was. Uh, was it Neto C? Neto C, one of the Nigerian music artists, yeah. was made a, a, an ambassador or commissioner for, for, for music or something like that in one of the eastern states. So if you have somebody that is actually in that sector, being part of the policy-making bodies, then they'll begin to take it a bit seriously. I, I need to, to be a bit lenient on the government as well, because there are so many fronts uh, on which to yeah. drive the economy forward. So besides all, if you want to diversify, you focus on agriculture, which is a very large employer to start with. So even agriculture, there, there is the revolution of agri-tech, agricultural technology and the rest of them. Um, but something that's quite interesting is that uh, the government is not interested in creative economies. Yeah, but but when, when Sotheby's starts auctioning uh, the Nigerian artworks, <laughs> the government wants restitution. <laughs> and you want them to be sent back to you send back to you things that have been kept for about uh, a, a decade or, or sorry uh, or hundreds of years mm. in pristine conditions they won't last two days they, they lost the they gloss and, and where are you going to put them where are the museums in nigeria what's happening to national theater mm. so these are very interesting conversations to have and one of the key things is that governments you cannot deal with all these things because you're you're busy monitoring monitoring your, your oil tankers then next focus will be agriculture then you have the entrepreneurship education vocational education to deal with so creative industry should, should join, join the back of the queue so if you want them to join the back the back of the queue then you might as well go into partnerships that's where the ppp is coming the public private partnerships I need to create the enabling environment for that industry to thrive. That was the same industry that made you the acclaimed giant of Africa in the first place after the economy was rebased. So it's 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 uh, we're, we're just going on, on a merry-go-round in, in this dimension. Honestly, right, there are so many things happening in that particular sector that I cannot, I, I, I'm going to have to read them out. I've got a list of things I've lost, I've lost track of what's happening in that sector. Including the Nollywood, what what role did the government play in Nollywood being where it is today? But I think I think the government will probably want to argue that out. I'm, I'm not a sports fan of the government, by the way. But they would they probably will say in 2019, we 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 uh, the central we directed the central bank to to uh, set up a fund for Nollywood, a 22 billion naira fund, what have you, for entrepreneurs and investors in creative and IT sector where where did that money go and don't forget the geg go government jonathan's government also were uh, at some point said all right yeah nollywood yeah let's just pump in this money and and we never saw where that money went uh, absolutely uh, uh, one, one of the other interesting things is um, what the kenyan government is doing now because they are beginning to take an interest in the you know kenya is very good when it comes to the, uh, that particular sector and they are beginning to take the the ip intellectual property and copyrights into into consideration and making it law 
unlike unlike what happens in Nigeria, sometimes it's, it can, I can remember I'd say about 10, 15 years ago, if if you tell, told your parents you wanted to go into music, they go like, I, yeah, yeah, you look at this hungry man, how are you going to survive? <laughs> because there's so much bootlegging and piracy. We've seen that, but things have changed. Technology has changed the game. I've been exploring Nigerian music industry. I've been struggling to get that paper published because I zeroed in on, on Maven's crew, Don Jazzy. But it looks like Don Jazzy has actually moved on. He's become an ambassador for, is it Glow or something like that? But what the John, Don Jazzy story is, is eye-opening. By the way, the Maven's crew have the likes of Tiwa Savage, Ricardo Banks, Daija, that 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 or DJ or whatever her name is is a very powerful ensemble and Corey De Bello, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if he has any plans of releasing anything else. But something about <laughs> that group was that Don Jazzy was actually based in London. He learned his craft in London before he moved back to Nigeria, and that is when he started making money because he was just living like rest, rest of I don't know about you, but you know life is very very hard here, hard to have savings here. He was just bootstrapping and just getting by. So he went back to Nigeria. He started out uh, be, being uh, a producer for music before he decided to move on. I listened to one interview, very interesting, impactful interview that Don Jazzy had with the likes of Jimmy Jad and Dr. Seed, uh, part of the whole crew, the whole ensemble. Jimmy Jads is one of the most celebrated uh, DJs, although there are many other newbies have, have come on, on to, onto the scene. But back then, if you had your mixtape and it wasn't Jimmy Jads, it, it, it made yeah, a difference. Yeah. If it, was, it wasn't Jimmy Jads, you must start talking. So when you hear these guys have that conversation, telling you about what skills they picked up from here, and it had to do with quality of production, that was the same problem Nollywood had. In my book, on, on digital entrepreneurship in Sub-Saharan Africa, I focus on Nollywood and how it has changed. And it was only published in 2019 by Paul Grave, a leading international publisher. There were two chapters looking at Nollywood and how Nollywood has transformed from, from, the, from the shooting shooting a video in, in less than an hour. <laughs> so that's very interesting because now they're beginning to invest. And this I'm talking about, when you talk about investment and funding, is still very much private sector driven. So the point now is that the government or policy makers need a re-education on the importance of this particular sector. And it goes beyond just music. There's so much out there. The arts, animation, games, these are getting or uh, 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 attracting international attention. Investors are flooding in. Doing, doing deals. But at the end of the day, these deals need to have some degree of regulation and protection. And that's where the government needs to step up. And that's a question I wanted to ask, uh, Prof. I'm sorry to cut you short there. So if we are talking about these regulations and what have you, when we don't even have the... People are probably will say we don't even have the enabling environment in, in, in Nigeria, Nigeria in Nigeria. Uh, got, people, people from Ghana readily pack their bag and say, you know, I want to go to Accra, I want to go to Masi, I want to go to Teparadi for for um, one week and just go and chill out, you know, after all the wahala here in, in the UK. Um, unfortunately, it's not always the same when you do that in Nigeria, you know, because obviously there's a security issue that what have you. Could that also be a factor that is contributing to what's uh, especially in Nigeria, not um, not um, um, exploiting the the brain drain that are actually actually making waves in, in in diaspora. For example, every day I I I get in my car, I want to go out. And when I listen to Capital F FM, there's no day they don't play a music by a person of Nigerian origin. There's no day. You know, it. it Let it me make you change so your channels. Let me make you change your channel. Go, <laughs> go to Radio One Extra. There's the two hour okay. slot every day on Afro Beats. And yeah, I'm carry sure on, carry it's, on. it's loaded, it's loaded full of, of Nigerian. And uh, most of them uh, actually want to want to retrace the steps back home, you know, to probably do what Don Jazzy has actually done. Uh, we see in Ghana the year of um, the years of homecoming and what have you, you see quite a lot of African Americans and even British, uh, Black British going to Ghana to establish and and and, and uh, 
funny enough, we had uh, someone from Ghana come on the show some time ago, and we we're talking about tourism in Ghana that earned them about nine billion dollars at, at some point. We're missing out of all of that. Over two hundred million people in Nigeria, and we're missing out of all of that. What can we do to 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 change this? What can we do to 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 make sure that our youth here in, in America, in Ireland, in Germany, they are doing very well. They are thinking, you know what? I want to go back home. I want to do something. What can we do to to make them feel welcome? And obviously create an environment to them for them so that they can obviously create also more jobs for uh people teaming youths in nigeria that are actually jobless at the moment hmm. that's it's an interesting question let me just draw your mind back to uh the grime scene in the uk exactly. um jmc what's what's this guy's name do you remember skepta's younger brother is it jmc um was, uh, was, uh, yeah jamie 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 yeah J jamie yeah. yeah these guys were in the news the whole family was in the news recently yes skepta is into grime big time and you can mm. begin to see the fusion skepta is, is a yoruba boy yeah tottenham born uh yoruba boy he's, he's nigerian so this yeah. guy is all about those partnerships and networks and i call it diaspora engagements that's what the, the seed needs to needs to feel like before the lockdown there are so many serious uh jam sessions in 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 london sold out whiskey sold out to royal albert hall on, on independence day a couple of years ago it was sold out tiwa savage comes here she, she fetches this place like as, as if she's go, go, uh, uh, filling up uh, a glass from the top nigerian artists come here Bonaboy. boy yeah, there's so many of them making waves. And how, how do they make those waves? They negotiate with the diaspora. So Nigerians in diaspora having those informal networks. Now, the problem is, how do you formalize informality? Hmm. That problem is older than I am. That's a Nigerian problem. <clears throat> and, and we're still working on the vaccine to sort out that problem. <laughs> So that's that's what the situation is. But you begin to look at it, it's interesting. Afrobeats, as as it is, is beginning to to morph. So Afrobeat meets hip hop. You can see all the collaborations with with artists in in, in the hip hop scene in in the United States. You can begin to see the 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 the, the mixture and fusion with with grime. Yeah, there, 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 there are a couple of Nigerians that are actually grime artists here. Be, 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 besides um, what you call it, uh, Skepta. There was this lady, oh, I, I can't remember, is it Queen of the South or something like that? Then they, uh, there's, there's so many there's, of There's Miss Banks. There, there is, uh, today, today I was, I, I just I just went out and, and my, my daughter told me about someone called uh, Dolapo and, and, and the kind of music she played. I'm thinking, this is the kind of music we listen to in Africa. And you know, the, 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 whole, of, the whole of UK is already like, grime has changed. Now, absolutely, Afrobeats, big time. Abs absolutely, yeah, and, and the lingo, be, and yeah. the, and the lingo has changed as well. There's code switching yeah. in between the oh. lyrics. You 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 hear one pigeon, they drop a pigeon English or some local Nigerian dialect, oh. in, in in there somewhere. <laughs> so what's interesting is that um, these guys are raking in the phones, and when they make the money. I think the government needs to begin to realize that look, you you cannot just get up and come and tax uh, revenue coming in from that from for from a sector you you have no role in establishing, or formalizing, or celebrating. Talking about Ghana and your Ghanaian guests, <clears throat> I, I was in Ghana. I was in Ghana after the year of return, which was 2019. So I went into Ghana first week of uh, uh, 2020, and I left just before the lockdown kicked in. So I spent a full month in, in, in Accra. So I could see that debate about the year of return. I could see what was happening. And that raises another interesting conversation because people tend to confuse the creative industries with, with uh, the cultural industries. So because when you talk about cultural industries, you're probably looking in terms of hospitality and tourism. But this, these are mutually reinforcing sectors. So if you're trying to promote tourism, what have you got to sell? 
Having said that, there's something called, uh, there's an initiative that has been championed by, by the British Council called Playable City Lagos. Playable City Lagos is all about creativity. These are creating spaces for the youth to actually enact or demonstrate that they can actually contribute and make people happy, especially in these uh, very difficult times. So one of the key things, we, we probably need, we, we probably need, um, uh, what do you call it? I, I don't, I'm not sure gatekeepers is, is the right word, but people like you, the, what you're doing, what you're doing is showing up the government and telling them that you're sitting on gold that you've refused to take advantage of. So one of those I, intermediaries, I, yeah, yourself I, and, and of course universities as well. Carry on, please. <laughs> Yeah, so, so sorry again. Uh, we were talking about obviously the impact of um, uh, non Nigerian born now, of, of Nigerian origin uh, uh, people in the in, in, in country, in, obviously in creative, uh, contributing immensely to the creative economy of the UK and indeed in Europe. Another person comes to my mind, and it's, it's this guy called KSI. He's a YouTuber. His name is GD. Um, uh, uh, Williams uh, or Latunji, he is a YouTuber and he had a, he had a, a boxing match, if you remember, with Logan Paul some time ago, uh, was it last year, 2019, and raked in a lot of money from boxing. This guy is just a YouTuber. All he does is just sit in front of his, of his, of his computer and play games. And he's got over 10 million subscribers. And you know what that is when you've got 10 million subscribers on YouTube? You know how much that rakes in for you? So, I mean, these are people who obviously parents came from Nigeria and came to settle here and give that to them here. And they're thinking out of the box and thinking, you know what, if this is not going to work for me, this other thing can work for me. Again, it comes to, to how our Nigerian youth, our African youth think. Um, would you say we would need to go back and really educate our youth? Okay, that I mean, there could be another way, just like you mentioned at the beginning of this um, session. You, you talked about stems. Okay, now we're talking about stems with an S. Uh, with an A, now, steam. Yeah. Oh, with an A, yeah. So yeah, now we, 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 we leave the stems or stems out of the way and talk about creativity. When we were having a chat um, um, sometime this week, uh, so last week, you mentioned a, a, a group called the Kurudu Boys. Absolutely. What, I think I've got an update to them. Yeah, carry on. <laughs> yeah, and what these boys are doing. And mm. marvelous things they're doing. But then some people somewhere give them computers, uh, give them lightning and a camera, and they felt, all right, we're on top of the world. But if I can tell you what these guys are doing, if they are from this other side of the world, they probably mm -hmm. will be swimming, swimming, in multi-million pound deals all over the world so yeah what, what, what can we do to support our youth it, it's 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 interesting that you mentioned that because when you were talking about um if they had been here they would have raked in uh qu qu quite a few dosh um it, it just took my mind back to musical youth do you remember that group, Musical Youth? Yes, Musical Youth. As the yes. Dochi Party left, uh, yeah, those guys. Uh, I, I think Margaret Thatcher sent them back to school. They, they, I don't think they made any money. Hmm. Yeah, they, they were quite young and everything. The difference uh, between Musical Youth and the Korodu Boys is that these guys actually reenact blockbusters. So the latest gist I've, I've got on them now, latest update, it was published in the Ghanaian newspaper where they actually. Uh, I'll just read out what, what it says here. It, it was published in the cable. It says, Ikorodu Boys, they are up for uh, 2021 Kids' Choice Awards. Hmm. So you can imagine they're beginning to win awards. These are people that are just... They're not organized. They're, hmm. Their manager happens to be the elder brother to, to, to one of the kids. These, these are people that actually engage with content and re-enact the content. They localize it. And that's craft, that's talent, that's creativity. 
So giving them computers doesn't really solve the problem. How about giving them an, educa an education? How about showcasing and celebrating them? Mm. Surely it's not a mutually exclusive event. They probably start engaging. These guys learn on the streets. I'm not sure they can afford the tuition fees to go to school. And they're of school age. They, their ages range from 11 to, to about 15 or thereabouts. They're doing great things. So anybody that's interested in investing in these sort of people should ensure that they actually get that quality education and get that mentoring and mentorship. I was watching, what's his name again? Uh, the gentleman that did live in Bordage uh, too. Uh, Ramsey Noah. Yeah. Uh, Ramsey Noah. Was it Ramsey Noah or, or probably uh, yeah. Michael? Uh, Ramsey Noah and, and uh, Majid Michael tend to confuse me sometimes. But yeah, was Ramsey, there was yeah. one statement one of them made. He said, leave, leave all those things. You need to go to school. I'm mm. talking about not going to school to get an education, but drama school to learn how to act. So you don't just get up and become an actor. And that's what's killing the industry. No acting skills, you don't want to audition because you think you're a big timer. That was one of, one of the things I picked up in my interviews when I was writing about Nollywood. So skills, skills development is equally important. You need to get, learn the ropes from the professionals. Yes, you've, you've got the skills. You're more natural than they are. But there are certain things you need to learn. And it's not just about volume. The first time in Nollywood, Nollywood is number three in the world. Hollywood, Bollywood, Nollywood, right? Yeah. How many Oscar nominations? The closest we got was Lion King, which was dismissed for speaking too much English. <laughs> Shocking. It was disqualified. Now we've got Milk, Milk Maiden or something. The, the second attempt. Be nominated. Meanwhile, how many South African movies have been nominated for the Oscars? Well, how does South Africa compare with Nollywood in terms of the... The, the 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 number no, number of movies produced and and the history of of movie making indigenous movie making so to speak so quality of the essence to cook up a good bill you need to, you need to make it on slow heat mm. so that's that's my perception of 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 the way things there are so many things wrong and the thing is that we have all the answers but who's interested Who's interested? What's going to make them interested? It's very easy. Okay, Boda Boy wins wins uh, some Grammy or something like that. He probably gets a letter from Buhari congratulating him. <laughs> Meanwhile, he, Buhari probably hasn't even heard any of his tracks. Yeah, I was just watching Jerusalem. Have you heard about Jerusalem and the Master KG uh, South Africa yes. hit? Yes. And 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 the the the, the Irish and Swiss police um, taking up the Jerusalem challenge. Wow. That's the latest now. It's not just the South African police that are dancing to Jerusalem. The Irish and the Swiss police are actually dancing to that as part of Jerusalem challenge. Hmm. Now that is branding South Africa. That is branding hmm. South Africa by a one-hit wonder. I call it a one-hit wonder because I'm still waiting for the next next track. I just published a paper on, on Gangnam Style, or Pan Gangnam Style. Uh, remember Sai? I just published yeah, a paper sorry. after 10 years in the works. It took me 10 years to get that paper out. So Sai came out, he wanted to ridicule Gangnam. There's a place called Gangnam in, in South Korea, in Seoul. So it's, it's, the, it's the Hollywood of, of, of Seoul, so to speak, very posh area. So he wanted to ridicule their lifestyle. What did he end up doing? Branding them, putting them on the world stage. <laughs> but meanwhile, these guys do not even take advantage. Their, 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 their destination marketing officers did not take, take advantage of that. And that was YouTube. This jam <laughs> made his debut on YouTube. So you're talking about YouTube. It reminds me of that it takes you places. So it's not about getting out there. It's what you do with it when you get there. Sorry for rambling on. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. So, uh, Prof, we're going to take a quick break, okay? And uh, when we come back, we, we, we want to look again, we want to go back into Nollywood and uh, obviously look at how we can improve Nollywood. Uh, at, the, at the moment, Netflix is, is, is um, 
obviously giving money to uh, some directors, some production outfit, more produce um, uh, um, outfit. Uh, obviously, it's got some uh, some quite okay dosh. Uh, so to use your words now, um, to 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 do some some um, movie flicks for Nollywood. Um, so when we go on this break and come back, we'll obviously touch on that, and uh, obviously you'll talk on on, on uh, many other stuff uh, regarding the creative economy in uh, Africa. So uh, stay right there if you're still watching us, and then we'll be back in a minute or two. Welcome back to the show. It's still the way show, and uh, my name is Wale, and we still got Professor Namdi Madiche with us, uh, who we, we've been talking so much extensively about the creative industry and creative economy in Africa. Really, um, before we went on the break, and uh, uh, Prof, we were talking about uh, Nollywood, Netflix, and what have you. There must have been something. All these multinational. Um, Western um, outfits, big on the organization seen in Africa to now put in money, okay? Because if they were not gaining, they wouldn't be putting in this money. You mentioned the musical giants. There's Facebook. Apple will also uh, extend in their hubs in Africa. Netflix is obviously uh, uh, um, going Nollywood now. How can we harness all these investments to better um, Africa? And two, would there be, and I asked the question, I asked um, the last um, person that came, not, not the last person that came on the show, that the, uh, at some point, Dr. Kobe Mensah, about probably having an African platform to probably give um, uh, um, uh, this, these people, these so-called big companies around for their money. Iroko Rock Studios, they tried it, okay, and in their own way, uh, obviously, uh, doing what they can. Or obviously not at the level of Netflix or probably Amazon at the moment. So, um, what do we stand to gain from all this? Are we just going to gain uh, making a few millionaires here and there? Uh, what else in the long run are we going to gain? um it's uh if you want to woo investors we we saw the the uh bruhaha uh between the eu and uh google over uh not paying taxes in ireland a couple of years ago yeah so that's how you get the big boys in there you 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 get in tax exemptions <laughs> yeah and you, and you say you 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 have you, you have the right to do that irrespective of whether you're part of the eu or not so that conversation is a is a separate conversation altogether so um how do you harness when the big boys come to town? Uh, you forgot to mention Google in Africa as well. You know, Google oh, yes. has also, yeah, not forgetting that Facebook and, and, and Microsoft uh, have bases there. Oh. Yeah, these guys have mansions there and, and they actually temporarily reside in, in Africa. Yeah, because there's money to be made. So the, the, way, the way you can actually, without scaring them away, because no matter how, how, how scared they are, they won't run away. Yeah, despite everything that's happened in Niger Delta and all the killings, kidnap kidnappings and abductions, Shell is still operating powerfully. Oh. It has not been scared away. So, strings attached, simple as that. When you come in, you want to invest, Universal Music Group, set up a dance academy or music academy. 
as part of the deal. So there, 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 there are there, there are either you go for direct tax or you go for that sort of indirect tax and ask them to commit a bit more. So you need to develop local talent wherever you go, because your intention is to make money and it's not going to stop you from making money. It's just that that, that money you won't be making that money uh, as as quickly as you anticipated. So if you're if you're there for the short haul, you, you you probably will make that money. But if you're there for the long haul and you make those initial investments, you make you reap your your, your money. Bottom line. So and there, there is also something that's quite interesting, and that's one thing that these guys uh, that moved in before after kick, kicked in the African free uh, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement before it kicked in on the first of January this year after being delayed for about six months due to COVID. So once you get into one country, you don't need another set of requirements to, 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 to spread across the continents because you're in the free market already. One leg in and that's it. You spread like a virus. I don't know why I keep using these analogies. <laughs> it's really <clear> my head. <laughs> so, but that's where it is, really. So you need to, you have the local talent. It's, you're not looking to, you're just trying to capacitate talent that already exists. So you're not starting from scratch. There's so many people to sign up. The big boys are becoming independent labels themselves now. I mean, you can't, you, UMG cannot be wanting to manage Bonaboy. Bon, bon I don't know what, what his program is. But I think the guy is ready, is ready to, to spin out and, and roll out his own productions. Most of the Nigerian artists now actually have their own production companies. They are mm -hmm. their, their own producers, executive directors, and actually signing, signing other artists. Are those people you want to come and manage? No, you're looking for newer talents. So invest in that newer talent, raise those academies. The same thing with football. There are so many football academies around the world. They go there because you need that migratory pipeline. You need an academy from which uh, likes of uh, Chelsea supporters, for instance, they, they, I'm, I'm not sure about them, <laughs> have an academy somewhere in Africa. Because if you're looking at that young guy, Nikorodu, that, that, that you're thinking to buy to, to be your number 10, in, in maybe five years time then you need to start courting that person at home in, in within his own natural habitat so i'm just thinking i'm just thinking uh, about there are so many ways you can approach them this is just one of those uh, ways that people have really um toyed with it's an idea that that, that could be uh, uh, experimented upon so what was the second part of your question um, so I was talking about um, um, the yeah. I've, I've actually, actually, you've, you've mentioned everything. You've mentioned everything. Actually, actually, oh, awesome. Mentioned everything. awesome. So um, the other part I actually want also wanted us to look at is the 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 industry called esports, which is now beginning to be another showcase in town. Okay, so um, pre before COVID, <laughs> and I'm sure you're probably ready for this to discuss esports. I know we also spoke about it before the uh, before this. Um, no, I'll tell you why I'm laughing. Wait, once you learn, once you finish your question, I'll tell you why I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, a PwC, you know, uh, mentioned that uh, there the, the are two Africa largest gaming market markets, and that's South Africa and Nigeria, and they expected if earnest very well much you know it's expected that in south africa gaming esports can add about 3.2 percent economic growth to the uh, south african market and nigeria 22.9 percent just it's just esports imagine what that can do for nigerian economy so we, we, is that is that any is that, is that another way is that a way of probably tapping into this and i know quite a lot of nigerians now especially youths if you if you go to probably in 10 houses if you, if you pick one of the houses in 10 houses in nigeria you probably see someone that's got a ps5 or xbox or what have you if not they probably will have a, a, a mobile phone where they play their games on it's, it's beginning to catch fire so to say so is that another opportunity there for people to tap into if you can if you don't have, if you don't have the acting talent you don't have the singing talent you could learn esports 
Mm. And obviously mm. participating. Mm. So is that is that another way? Is that another avenue, an outlet for our youth to try? Yeah. Uh, and again, I'm, don't I'm forget sorry. to tell me why you're laughing. Right. Okay. <laughs> let me start why I'm laughing. You know, you, you were talking about esports, and it was just this afternoon. I can't remember what channel. I was just flipping channels in and out of sleep because that's all I do all day. Just sleep, pick up the remote, get up, eat, uh, have a sip of beverage or something, and that sort of thing. So I saw that esport uh, thing uh, this afternoon, uh, probably around four-ish, and uh, it was about this simulation. You know, the, the, the stadia are empty these days, so they can mm. actually activate an audience. Yes. Yeah, use animation to 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 position fans and give mm. you that that's watching experience, that experience that that you normally see when fans used to be there. So yeah. that is what the lockdown and COVID has has brought about innovation. It's all about that that uh, experience, that consumer experience. Because you can imagine your 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 main striker dribbling the whole field and his goalkeeper and scoring ten goals in two minutes. And nobody's sharing him. But when they put the fans, uh, all the noise, background noise, as if the stadium was packed, it, it actually works on that experience. And I haven't said that. Yes, Nigerian youths. I'm, that's another conversation because when I talked, when I wrote a paper on Nigerian football, I was saying that people cannot even name 10, 10 teams in the domestic league. But they will tell you how much the last goalkeeper in Chelsea was, was uh, how much they was paid for the last goalkeeper in Chelsea. They tell you who is going to join, tell you what the, before the manager actually makes the changes or substitutions on the field, they will tell you who is replacing who. So they know all the detail. So now that's something that's quite interesting. That's why I'm, I'm coming towards the animation and games as well. Because you talk about PlayStation and all those, FIFA on, on PlayStation and Xbox and all those sort of things. These are, you, you get contents. You get content makers or content creators, as the case may be. There are so many youths in Nigeria that are so into sports and diverse other areas that can actually mimic, like the Korodu boys. Again, I, I think the, the, the uh, FIFA Club World Cup is ongoing now in Qatar. I think they are playing the semifinals. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a long time. I didn't even hear about it. I just... Because I flicked a few channels, uh, that's where when when I realized it was, it was going on. If somebody actually puts that out there on say just an, an animation of it, or, or, or put it on on TikTok, talking about TikTok, there's there's, there's a rival to TikTok. Was it uh, was it uh, is it Trila? There's one called Trila that um, Universal Music Group fell out of favor with for 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 not paying artists. Meanwhile, they they huge library. For for digital music, there, there, there was a bit of a tiff between between um, Universal Music Group and and Trilla, which is the the, the uh, streaming platform. Now that's something that's quite interesting. That fallout has revealed the the incapacity of both both parties, and there's only one person that suffers: the art, artist that actually has rights to to, to uh, the, the content that is being distributed. So if this guy hasn't fallen out, you probably if if the, everybody was sharing that money and keeping quiet and everybody was so happy, the artist probably wouldn't know what's going on. Mm. So there is potential there. But like I said, you know, uh, it's, it's about formalizing the informality in the sector. So those in the know, we need an organized private sector that takes that sector seriously. And when I say organized private sector, I'm not talking about P-Man. I've been hearing about P-Man since, be <laughs> since before I was born. I, they, they, they have no teeth. They're not, doing, they're not doing enough, if anything at all. How are they protecting the sector? How is, has the sector been marketed? Has it been promoted? Has it been developed? How much pressure are they putting on the government to take the sector seriously? How are they dealing with the issue of piracy? Funding, youth development, innovation. I give them zero on all counts. So I think the P man should be disbanded. Let it, we, we need something like the P man, but just I think the, the, that name P man is cursed, so to speak. So that's that's it. Doing first things first. Yeah, get, get an organized private sector that has the wherewithal to negotiate. 
terms and conditions for the sector. <coughs> I don't know if that answers oh, your question. Oh, it does, it does, really, it does, really, because um, the, the COVID, as, as, as evil as it sounds, uh, you know, the pandemic, the pandemic as evil, it's actually brought about a, a, a change in the way things are going to be run from now on. You know, it's, but the question is, can we, as Africa, benefit from all these things? I mean, in the, in the continent where maybe you don't even have the connectivity, okay? Here, um, you see people since lockdown have uh, been working from home. How many people, how many companies can actually afford to do that back in Africa? How many people can, you know, just pick their laptop or their computer and, you know, actually work from home? You know, students, our children have been like doing remote learning since the lockdown. How many people in Africa can or do have access to that, you know, to a laptop, to a simple laptop? Even if they do, what about the connectivity? Uh, can, it, can a teacher in Nigeria just sit down in, in his or house and then obviously teach, you know, without either one of those internet providers, you know, just chopping the data like that? It's a big issue. It's a big issue. And thanks for raising that because um, it wasn't too long ago. Um, even in the UK, in, there's poverty. There's poverty in this country. Yeah. Um, I've, uh, I saw it was even on BBC, um, I think it was last night actually, where you find a family um, of maybe four kids sharing a single laptop. Yeah, so many, many uh, philanthropists are donating laptops to some of those households. And you only donate laptops to people that you've heard their story. So the point oh. is nobody is actually telling the story. Nobody is actually highlighting that need. Yes. Students, universities are suffering. Yeah, uh, my contacts at the University of Ghana. I, when I, I spoke with somebody there today, he said uh, something like he was going to the office. I said, "What are you guys on campus?" He said, "Yeah, campus is kind of partially open because of that same problem." So yeah. students want to get that Wi-Fi that actually works, so they are allowed to come into campus based on that. But it's kind of staggered and socially distanced. Yeah. Yeah, and I was on another um, conference with uh, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Pretoria uh, a while back, and that conversation came up as well. And they, 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 they talked about what they were doing in order to enhance or help those that are disadvantaged by that digital divide. It's a big issue. So one of the key areas, um, for, from my own perspective, I'm not in that leadership role. From my own perspective is that it gives the internet service providers the opportunity to demonstrate their CSR corporate social responsibility by partnering with universities and giving them concessions and making sure that they can actually cope with that bandwidth. Because come think of it, some of these guys are, are recruiting. These uh, telecoms companies will be recruiting. Where would they be recruiting from? From those graduates. So why don't you invest in that talent that you will need further down the line? And apart from the fact that it makes you look good as well. And, and, and it's, it's, it's uh, good you actually mentioned this because um, just just was there on Friday, I had a text message from uh, one of my, my, from my children's school uh, when they said um, they, had the, um, they are able to give free data to children, mm. you know, uh, mm. working from home. Um, all you need to do is just to fill in a... a, a Sorry, Google just pardon me. Let me. It looks like I'm losing power. Okay. Uh. Right, we're back on. Sorry. Yeah. Go on. So, um, so yeah, that you should um, um, just uh, that the um, um, telecoms provider uh, willing to give out free data to you mm -hmm. know children to help in remote learning in school. But and this is this is happening here uh, again. It comes to to it bothers me why we've got all these big telecoms companies. Uh, well, probably some of them are actually subsidiaries of the companies based here, uh, the mm. MTN, the the mm. Airtel, the whatever you want to call them. Why are they not doing stuff like this? I mean, uh, they, they, we have a, a, a big brother 
and some telecom companies willing to splash the cash on some people sleeping or doing some whatever. But when it comes to educating the mind, educating the future, they kind of shy away. Um, yeah. I was watching one of those uh, Nollywood act, uh, actors uh, on Instagram one day, and they were talking about this young, bright girl from Nigeria that had a set of, sets of A's in our exams mm. and no one was celebrating this girl and mm. yes someone that came out of big brother house governments are Absolutely. falling over each you other mean, to make to make our is that not is that not something wrong in the way we approach the, yeah there people? is yeah there is there is something uh absolutely wrong um uh with, with those sort of things i think one of the key areas is that you don't force um csr on people or organizations or companies uh but i think naming and shaming does go a long way so one of the things is that um, as long as there's no monopoly in that sector so whoever is doing that needs to be applauded by the institutions who are beneficiaries and by so doing is actually or rather actually equates to calling out those that are not doing likewise so that's something that's quite interesting to think about i remember mtm had a problem in nigeria at some point in time i think it had to do with money or whatever or they were given instructions to to uh to for privacy um, invasions or whatever and they, and they didn't play ball along those lines now that's something that's quite interesting. They, they probably settled out of court because NTA couldn't leave. You remember that thing I was telling you about? Yeah. If, you, if there's money to be made, no matter how bruised you are, you're going to stay put. Hmm. So that's something that's quite interesting to think in terms of how are these educational institutions and the regulatory authorities encouraging that data? Not necessarily free data, but that security of data and the uh, the required bandwidth considering the changes in circumstances due to the pandemic now something that's quite important to think in terms of now let me just use one very simplistic assumption or, or example if 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 mtm was probably paying 10 percent tax a month and it decides to roll out data or increases its bandwidth at a subsidized rate to uh, educational institutions. And as a result, NCC decides to drop that tax to, to, to say 7%. Then are they really losing out? That, that 3% difference that they, that, that they saved from, from, from that tax could be channeled into capacitating their users in institutions especially education institutions. Now that's something that is in, interesting to think of. Then there, there is the other option. I don't, I don't really know. I'm not a tech guy. I don't know how telecoms works. But when I was at, at the Amadi Bello University, we, we didn't re rely on, on the national grid. Electricity was entirely generated. <laughs> Likewise, the water supply. So how, how, about, how about data? How about data? These are some of universities that have engineering departments, very powerful engineering departments. And you don't, some of them actually offer degrees in, in telecoms, telecoms infrastructure. Why don't you build a campus-wide infra, uh, telecoms infrastructure? I'm not talking about secondary schools and primary schools here. I'm mm. talking about universities and, and especially the polytechnics. So that's, that's an option. I know it's doable. Well, I believe it is. So, but these are some of the things you, you begin to think in terms of. And the other one that is, that is ready to go, ready to eat approach or strategy, is for those universities actually engage and partner, sign MOUs with telecoms providers. You need it now. And of course, as part of that, you need to remember that it has to be long-term MOUs because pandemic is not going to be here for forever. It's going to go. So when it does go, that MOU is still binding on both parties. So it's for better for worse. That's a marriage made in heaven. <laughs> well, it's been very interesting talking to you, Prof.
Uh, where's the time gone? It's not. It's not. It's nine o'clock. We're actually one minute. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> it is being very interesting. This is this interesting uh, discussion with you today, Dr. Uh, Professor Madiche. So, Professor Madiche is um, professor of marketing and entrepreneurship at Unisic. That's University of uh, as uh, uh, that's the university name after uh, the first president of Nigeria, Namdi Azikiwe Business School in Oka, Nigeria. And also a research fellow at the Bloomsbury Institute. We thank you so much for your time today, Prof. It's been very engaging, very interesting. And hopefully someone out there watching today will be able to pick one or two uh, from what you've said today. And actually, I'll tell you what, the first time we had a chat about this, I think it was on Tuesday or so, Monday, when we when we when we talked about this, and you mentioned some things, and I'm thinking, hmm, okay. I quickly wrote them down. So I got free consultancy from you. <laughs> so I am sure I'm going to implement those things at some point. At some point, don't, don't worry, Prof, I'll give you credit anyway. I'm actually giving you credit now to the whole world. <laughs> so, so, so I want to thank you so much for your time and obviously for everything you said today. And hopefully one, one or two people out there will have um, obviously picked up from what you've said and obviously try as much as possible to know only develop themselves so also develop our future because i'm always we this program always is very particular about our future and our future are our use if we develop them then uh, we, we we've done what we should be doing thank you for coming on the show prof and hopefully sometime soon we call upon you and we'll always obviously discuss some other burning issues thanks for having me keep paving the way on the way show Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank you so much. Have a great week yourself. Thank you. You too. Cheers. So that's that's um, today's program. Uh, very big thanks again to Professor Nandi Madiche uh, for joining us on our show today. And obviously, thank you to everyone that's contributed on the show today. Um, thank you uh, to Sid, Sid Eshin, uh, Sandra Sylvester, uh, Sami Emmanuel, thank you, Expansa, thank you, Dion. Um, Dion, I hope you're enjoying your new place in the pool. Um, thank you for joining the show, Grace Brown Johnson. Thank you, Grace, um, for uh, coming on the show and uh, joining us. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed everything we discussed today. Um, if you did, uh, please join us next week as we'll be discussing with someone again coming on the show, The Way Show. And please don't forget to tell someone about this show. It's The Way Show, it comes to you every Sunday, 8 p.m. GMT on YouTube Live. So tell someone and uh, obviously continue to subscribe and like all our videos. And hopefully next week we'll be joining you. Special thanks to my friends and colleague, uh, Yomi, uh, who uh, made sure that everything you know, went well on the show today. So till next week, please do take care of yourself, stay safe, and have a great week ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye.